This is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Pause. This is a choice. Neo's choice between the blue pill or the red pill. A choice that can send his life in two completely different directions. We know what he's likely to choose, but we also know that after taking that pill, there's no going back. Remember, all I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. It's not an action scene, just two characters sitting in a room. Yet, this is one of the most memorable scenes from The Matrix. A choice is what makes the scene dramatic and gives action to dialogue. And in this one video, I will simplify writing a great scene for you forever. So the Matrix blue pill, red pill scene is big, dramatic, and obvious. But is the choice still this obvious in a more subtle scene? Mom, how much can we spend? I would say $4. Anything under four dollars. This is a scene from Little Miss Sunshine. The family is traveling so that Olive can compete in the Little Miss Sunshine beauty pageant. In the beginning of the scene, Olive orders ice cream. What does alamodi mean? Oh, that means it comes with ice cream. Okay, alamodi. Olive for breakfast. Said four dollars. This sets up our character want. Olive wants ice cream, so she takes an action to get some. However, Olive's father, Richard, believes that since Olive is about to compete in a beauty pageant, she should not eat the ice cream. Olive, can I tell you a little something about ice cream? Yeah. Well, ice cream is made from cream, which comes from cow's milk, and cream has a lot of fat in it. Richard. What? She's gonna find out anyway, remember? Pause. So Olive wants ice cream, and Richard wants to stop her. A choice has now presented itself. Will Olive eat the ice cream or not? Now the dialogue about what choice to make begins. Let me quickly clear up dialogue for you. Dialogue is a debate about a choice. Characters argue the two options in the choice back and forth trying to make a decision. This is how words become action. The characters are taking action through dialogue to win the choice and get their way. Olive's mother enters the debate and falls under side A, backing Olive's choice. And she does so by giving her beliefs. I just want you to understand it's okay to be skinny and it's okay to be fat if that's what you want to be. Whatever you want, it's okay. But then her father gives a counter argument. Okay, but Olive, let me ask you this. Those women in Miss America, are they skinny or are they fat? We get each character's worldview through this simple decision to eat the ice cream or not. The scene remains open until a choice is made, and the scene will end when Olive finally answers the dramatic question, will she eat the ice cream or not? Once you see dialogue like this, you'll never unsee it. With the Templars, have attacked a Saracen caravan. No! It was no caravan. It was an army headed for Bethlehem to desecrate the birthplace of our Lord. Bring out with the Templars, have broken the king's pledge of peace. This debate is as obvious as it can get. The characters are literally color-coded. White wants to go to war, blue doesn't. Saladin will come into this king. Tiberius knows more than a Christian should about Saladin's intentions. And they debate in front of the king about what choice he should make. Once you understand that dialogue is characters debating a choice, you can express this choice debate in all sorts of genres. Maybe an amateur detective wants to convince a cop to arrest a suspect. And there was no way of getting Alan into court in the first place? Because there was no evidence, Robert. What do you mean there's no evidence? You have him seen with the ciphers, the military boot prints, the same size shoes and gloves, the most dangerous game, the Zodiac watch, the background with school children, the, the misspellings of Christmas, the bloody knife. All circumstantial. Maybe a suitor wants to ask for a lady's hand in marriage. From the first moment I met you, your arrogance and conceit, your selfish disdain for the feelings of others made me realize that you were the last man in the world I could ever be prevailed upon to marry. You can also make a choice funny by having a character overreact to win a debate. Yeah, but I wasn't over. Give me the marker, dude. I'm marking an eight. Smoking, my friend. You're entering a world of pain, Walter. You can give them a twang. He's 
gonna stay in the big house? Steven, he's a slaver. It's different. In the big house. Use subtitles. You can even make them sing. Point is, you can switch the genre all you want, but no matter what, dialogue is characters debating a choice back and forth. Want to see more examples I couldn't fit in this video? Check out practicalscreenwriting.com slash choice for more scene breakdowns. So characters are debating a choice in dialogue, but who makes the choice? You'll hear writers talk about who has the power in a scene, but where does power come from? Whoever holds the choice, holds the power. The other characters must convince the decision maker to make the choice they think is right. In this scene, Olive has the power of the choice. She listens to both of her parents give their point of view as they try to convince her to take their side. But it's still her decision. Stakes raise, the ice cream arrives. I'll emote you, right? I'll be back with your waffles in a sec. Now it's time. What will Olive do? Richard wins. In this moment, Olive has made a choice in one direction. Richard feels satisfied that his worldview has won out. But this is where the other characters in the scene come into play. As Olive chooses not to eat her ice cream, the other characters choose a side by taking action. Yeah, I like a little. Dwayne, Frank, Olive's not gonna have her ice cream. Yeah, do you mind if I have a little yeah, bit? Yeah, let's dig in. All the characters in the scene are now involved. With all the characters involved, Olive makes her final choice. Wait! Stop! Don't eat it all! The choice maker in a scene holds the power in that moment, but there's a relationship dynamic in the scene as well. All right, Olive. Richard. This is where character hierarchy comes into play. In every scene, whether stated or not, there is hierarchy in character relationships. Even in the Little Miss Sunshine scene, there is hierarchy. Olive's parents are the first to argue the two sides of the choice while the other characters stay quiet. The rest of the family knows not to insert themselves rudely into a conversation between parents and their child. But when Olive opens the dialogue up to the entire table, Does anyone want my ice cream? Grandpa speaks up first. Yeah, I like a little. Dwayne, Frank, Olive's not gonna have her ice cream. Grandpa is the mentor for Olive's viewpoint in the scene. Boy, I feel sorry for anybody that doesn't want to enjoy their ice cream so early in the morning. And throughout the story, he is philosophically against Richard. When Grandpa speaks up and takes a side, the other characters follow his lead. This influences Olive, and she overturns her choice. Grandpa wins the scene, overturning Richard in the hierarchy. Whoever has the choice has the power and the other characters must convince the choice maker to do what they want. Quick tip, if you give a character the power of choice, they don't have to say anything to win the debate. So if you want to show that a character is powerful, make them say very little. The same silent power of the choice can be used to make a joke. Is this your homework, Larry? Look, man. Do, it please. Is this your homework, Larry? Just ask him about the car, man. Is this yours, Larry? This is why Olive barely says anything in the scene. But the ice cream scene is a little diner scene with a family. What if we take a character with some real decision-making power and pressure them? The FBI is downstairs. What? This is succession. Yeah. Tell them the f*** off. Yeah, these are the ones who don't f*** off. This is a search warrant. What do they do at the front desk? What are we doing? They're at the gates. Uh... Can we call Southern District? Oh, get Leo, oh, get, 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 get. Logan has the power of choice in this scene, and he sits at the top of the hierarchy in the company. Because of this, notice how all the other characters are against Logan. Every other character wants him to cooperate, and they all matter for the debate. Even if a character says nothing, they are taking a side. We see their point of view through their body language. And all of this signals, one, where they are in the hierarchy, and two, what side they fall under in the present choice. 
notice that only Jerry, the president of the company, speaks plainly to Logan. Apparently there's about 20 of them down Why don't we just ask them if they can come back tomorrow? Logan, they are coming up. And if you don't open the door, they will kick it in. And if you don't open the filing cabinet, they will pull out a crowbar. This is a show of resolve. And there are cameras outside, and they do not need to see the FBI meeting any resistance. What do we say? Cooperate. Open up. Let them in. Let's go. And all of Logan's subordinates sigh in relief. Logan has made his choice. We're cooperating. We're cooperating. Hierarchy is innate in every character relationship, work environment, and even friendships. When a choice arises, this is the clearest time to see this dynamic in action. Now there's one more piece to add to really make a scene pop. While you can simply have the characters argue in dialogue and make a choice, it makes the scene much more interesting to watch if you set up a scene object the characters use to express the argument. Here it's very obvious. The two pills represent the two paths Neo can take. Stay in the dream world or embrace the truth of reality. Many times, a scene object is what you remember from that scene. The scene object is more than just an object. It is a symbol of the current choice. It is a physical representation of a choice between two worlds, two viewpoints, two paths. Okay? Sign the paper. Make your scene object a big enough debate and you can make three movies about it. Returning to the Little Miss Sunshine scene, the scene object should be pretty obvious, the ice cream. Notice how a simple bowl of ice cream is now a symbol of being a loser in Richard's eyes and doing what you want to do in Cheryl's. The scene object makes the entire drama work. Want to see more examples? Check out practicalscreenwriting.com choice for more scene breakdowns. Now let's see all of the pieces together in one masterfully written opening scene. This is the opening of Steve Jobs. Screen says it's an unimplemented trap, but the error code is wrong. It's a system error. So what's the upshot? It's not going to say hello. It absolutely is going to say hello. It's nobody's fault. It's you a system built error. the voice demo. The voice demo is flaky. I've been telling down. you that for this thing is overbuilt. It opens with a problem. The voice demo is not working moments before the launch of Apple's Macintosh computer. Steve wants it fixed right. now. Skip over the voice demo. We need it to say hello. You're not hearing me. It's not going to say hello. Fix it. Now we have the debate. Steve is at the top of the hierarchy as Apple's CEO. However, it's Andy's choice to fix the voice demo. Fix it? Yeah. <laughs> In 40 minutes? Fix it. I can't. Who's the person who can? I'm the person who can, and I can't. Even though Steve's in a higher position, I'll Steve must convince his engineer bad. to fix the demo. That means. It means the demo is more than likely going to crash. You have to keep your voices down, Joel Fortzheimer is sitting. Joanna is Jobs' right-hand woman, but here she backs Andy, worrying about the success of the launch. It's 20 seconds out of a two-hour launch. Why not just cut it? We can't cut it. Yeah, you just cut two it. Two days ago, we ran a Super Bowl ad that could have won the Oscar for Best Short Film. There are more people who can tell you about the ad than can tell you who won the game. Then we get a stakes raise through a new choice. The world. It didn't say it was going to say hello. You don't open the house in five. Don't open the house. This mini choice serves as a little setup for a new character, the other Andy, fully entering the scene a moment later with another new choice. Andy? Which one? The other Andy. You're right there. Why would I be calling out? He needs out? to talk to you? Yeah. The exit signs need to be off or we're not going to get a full blackout. We've spoken to the building manager and the fire marshal. And? There's absolutely no way they're going to let us turn the exit signs off. I'll pay whatever the fine is. The fine is they're going to come in and tell everyone to leave. The unseen fire marshal has the power of the choice in this moment because he can make everyone leave the auditorium. But Steve refuses to acknowledge the marshal's authority. If a fire causes a stampede to the unmarked exits, it'll have been well worth it for those who survive. For those who don't, less so, but still pretty good. Look, I, I need it to go black, real black. Get rid of the exit signs and don't let me know how you did it. Fix the voice demo. Steve Jobs makes the decision about what will happen for everyone, then leaves. And that's the point of this opening. Steve Jobs sees himself as the ultimate decision maker. And notice that this opening scene feels huge and high stakes, even though it is simply a few characters standing in front of a box on a stage. 
Want more scene breakdowns? Check out practicalscreenwriting.com slash choice for more. And when writing your scene, use this simple formula. Who wants what in the scene? Who is in their way? Will A or B be chosen? What is the important object the debate is over? Where do all the characters in the scene stand on the choice? Whose choice is it? How is pressure built on the choice? And what option is chosen? Thanks for watching. And if you made it this far, please leave a like on the video and I'll see you next time.